Hello, this is Grady Parsons, and this is our continued series on the Book of Order of the Presbyterian Church, looking at the first section, which is called the Foundations of Polity. Today we're looking at section F30103, about officers. That our blessed Savior for the edification of the visible church, which is his body, hath appointed officers not only to preach the gospel and minister sacraments, but also to exercise discipline for the preservation of both truth and duty, that it is incumbent upon these officers and upon the whole church, in whose name they act, to censor or cast out the erroneous and scandalous, observing in all cases the rules contained in the Word of God. And what we find in other reference to officers also is in the Confession of 67 in section 939, a recognition of special gifts of the Spirit for the ordering of its life as a community, the church calls, trains, authorizes certain members for leadership and oversight. The persons qualified for these duties in accordance with the polity of the church are set apart by the ordination or other appropriate act and thus made responsible for their special ministries. So as we've talked before in the church, we have ordered ministries. We have ministers. Uh, we, we don't just take people from nowhere. We have a process. We have questions we ask. We have education we expect. We have a call, a call that comes from uh, the persons, from God to that person, the person that comes from that body to that person to serve as an officer, to serve as a teaching elder or a ruling elder or a deacon, one of the offices in the church that we ordain to. Recently, I was part of an installation service where the reality of our call system is very evident. Here was a person being installed as the pastor of a church. There were members of her presbytery gathered as the commission that installs that person. There were those of us from other parts of the country that came to be a witness to this installation. There were ruling elders in her own congregation that would soon uh, welcome her as a moderator of their session and lead with her in the church. This whole multi-act, multi-layered uh, thing we called ordered ministry in the church, again, is, is part of what it means to be a reformed person. It's part of what it means to be part of this ministry we have. Because we do see in our own churches people that have special gifts for leadership, special gifts for, for guiding people, special gifts for discernment, special gifts for inspiring us and encouraging us and nurturing us. And we call those people to office, not because of uh, any magic, not because we change the nature of who they are, but because uh, there is a function that needs to happen in order for our ministry and witness to be complete. And these people have the gifts to help that happen. So we all come together, as you know, in an installation service. There's the worship service, there's the preaching of the word, there's a charge to the minister, and also the charge to the congregation, and the historic constitutional questions that mark the, sort of the beginning and ending chapters of all the things we do uh, as a church. And in the end, the per minister got up and gave their own charge kind of to the congregation and gave the benediction, and that brings all this to this nice close. It's all about ministry and life and gifts and talents and opportunities and, and believing uh, in God's leading of the Spirit and working with that Spirit as it leads us to people uh, who we want you to call to be in service. So in your congregation, this time of year, there's often a, a committee that's searching around for people to be elders or if you have deacons to be deacons, people seeking out those people that have special gifts and leadership people that the church needs to offer themselves up and offer their gifts of their time and their talent and their stewardship, offering those up for the service of the church. And as you begin to think about those people and who those people will be, I really want to challenge you to really think, what is God calling our congregation to become? And how can these people help us move towards that space, help lead us uh, towards that space? Being an elder in the, in the church is one of the oldest really officer, offices of the church going back to the time of Moses and the advice he got from his father-in-law about how to organize the people. It's an old office of the church. It's leadership in the church. And so teaching elders and ruling elders working together, how is your church utilizing this great sort of marriage of gifts and talents that we have as we lead our church and being the kind of people God wants us to be? It's a significant ministry. And it's a ministry that's marked us as Presbyterians distinctly from other people who don't have this parity of their ministers and their lay leaders or elders leaders being together. So I want to encourage you to do that. I encourage you to think carefully about who you're calling for those offices. Think what you really want them to do and want them to lead. Think about the kind of characteristics they have. And we'll talk again soon. Thanks.